Hello beautiful souls, welcome to another of my uh, videos um, Hi, if you are new to my channel, my name is Mafalda I'm the creator of Bookworm Retreat, both the YouTube channel, the blog and the Instagram that you can follow uh, every single update there uh, I have it all in the description box down below so you can check it out So today is a July wrap up and July was a pretty good month, I think. I think I read eight or nine books, something like that, because I had my week, my the last week of July, I had it uh, as uh, a vacation week, so it was my week off. Uh, it also was my birthday, so yay. <laughs> and um, I ended up reading like two books or three in, in that week. Um, and we also had a small getaway here in Portugal, we went to Coimbra, I never went to Coimbra before and I went there and it was really fun, uh, it's not my type of city, <laughs> I don't want to say anything that may offend anyone but I think that um, it has some good points and some downsides of Coimbra but we went there because of a very good a bakery shop that's called Bona and it's gluten-free, soy-free, milk-free or dairy-free so we went there to eat basically <laughs> and it was pretty cool it was like a two-day um, getaway and it was it was very cool yeah so books read uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine books so I have it all here so um, I started a month reading um, the Seventh Husbands of uh, Evelyn Hugo, and I also read read I also read uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue. That's hard. And um, both of uh, both books are pretty cool. They were both uh, actually Evelyn was a five star read, and um, Red, White, and Royal Blue was a four star read. I really enjoyed both stories. They are different, but they are very cool. I really enjoyed Evelyn Hugo. You have. Uh, review in Portuguese if you want to check it out, I think it's down below. Um, Red, White and Royal Blue was also a very good read, I really enjoyed the book and it was fun, I mean it's it's different from Evelyn Hugo but it has the same um, it, it, it has the same feeling, you know what I mean, like they are both good books with a great amazing writing style and amazing stories, so I really enjoyed that book. And then I read, I read A Promise of Fire by Amanda Bouchet. I gave it a 3, 3.5 out of 5 stars. Mainly because, um, the, mainly because the book was unexpectedly, uh, it was not that good, <laughs> fortunately. I was really excited, excited to read because um, if you go to the Goodreads review, sorry, I just... I drank, uh, I drank, uh, I took a sip of water and went to the wrong pipe, <laughs> sorry. Um, if you go to the Goodreads, the reviews they give, it's like, it's a combination between Akutar, A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Cruel Prince, it's a fantasy book and I was super excited to read and the story is awful. I mean, it has a lot of potential, it has a very interesting world building, but unfortunately the characters are yeah <laughs> I don't know how to describe it except they should have you know they should be more you know what I mean like the characters lack of depth and lack of you know more so something for me to connect you know the, the main troops of this book are um, enemies to lovers and found family that part was pretty cool the found family part was pretty cool enemies to lovers I had a small problem there because you om the, the book is so fast it happened so fast that you almost go to enemies to lovers turn to lovers uh, lovers that's it done and I really thought that you know, if, if it was a standalone, I kind of like get it because you should you need to rush it. If it's a standalone, you need to rush the story. But it's a trilogy, so it's it's the first book of three. I don't really get why we are having <laughs> this uh, in a in a in a fast pace because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, at least to me. 
at least to me. <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, I talked to other friends of mine that were reading the book and felt the same thing. So another problem was that the male character, so you have a female male character uh, romance going on, and the male character was too possessive, too, too, it was too much, like she existed because he wanted that she, he wanted her, you know, that kind of tension and red flags that I don't really uh, enjoy. I mean, I, I get a little bit of jealousy, a little bit of overprotectiveness, but when it becomes too much, I feel like it's something that I'm not really in the mood to read anymore. Maybe because I'm older, maybe because I feel like when we are younger, they try to feed us this idea that men should protect us. I don't know if that's true or not, but I feel like that's what most of the books, or at least romantic books, try to do. And unfortunately, I felt that in this book, like, I need to keep you because I found you and you are my life. And it's kind of like, I only exist because you are here. And in, that, in the sense that it's way too possessive way to, to base on possessiveness and that kind of feeling that I don't really enjoy. So unfortunately the book was a no-no to me. But not everything is bad because I read The North Wind by Alexandra Warwick and it was a five-star read because the book was God oh God. It was amazing. It's an enemies to lovers. It has a one-bed troop. It has a one-horse troop. It's kind of like... <laughs> You find, you finally find a book that has fantasy and romance and enemies to lovers all in one. So yeah, that's the North Wind. It's a, the first book, uh, the first book of a series, and um, the story is about the North Wind. So um, an entity that's that's a man, but or that's disguised as a man that comes every decade, every few decades to a village to collect a bride. And you do have Ren, that is the main character, the female male character. And she's a mix between Poppy and Aileen, or... You know, you know what I mean, I'm not going to give you Throne of Glass spoiler. So Aileen and Poppy. And she's a mix between both of them. So she's very sassy, very down to earth, very confident of her skills. And she doesn't want. She doesn't want to marry. She doesn't want to have anything to do with men. And and she only goes to. Uh, she only goes with the North Wind to protect her twin sister. And it's very good how the book develops their relationship. So it's not rushed. You don't feel like they just met and then they are enemies and then oh, uh, like two days later they are lovers, that's not like that, it takes time, you feel that something that um, the characters are building, you know, like trust and honesty and all of that, those values appear there. At the same time, you do have troops that are pretty good, so enemies lovers, one bad troop, one horse troop, those are the main troops that I really enjoy. It's very, ro it's not romantic, but it has romance and it's very fan high fantasy, it's not high fantasy, it has a lot of fantastic there, it has um, Greek mythology, which I'm always down to read more. The world building is based on Greek mythology, so you have the gods there, the Greek gods there, you have a lot of myths going on, you have a clear division between the Deadlands and um, Hades and the living, so everything there is very connected with Greek mythology. At the same time, you do have a very good book that has its own identity, which is awesome. So I highly advise you to read The North Wind by Alex Alexandra Warwick. It's very good and it was one of my favorite books of this month. So the next read I actually deleted from my uh, e-reader because it was <laughs> one of those reads that was so bad that I didn't want to have it here uh, occupying space of for good books. It's called The Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian and yeah it's another I, I, I feel like fantasy it's a very it's a gambling you know what I mean like you can hit or miss and that's it and The Ash Princess is another perfect example of a very interesting story with a lot of potential that went wrong. So the main character, the female main character that is supposed to save the country from the invaders and blah blah blah, she's very spineless, she's very 
boring she's very like I, I get I get what the author is saying like she's afraid because she was her homeland was conquered and she lost her mother and all of that but at the same time you do read a lot of fantasy that the characters go to the same pro through the same process and do have that spark that ignites when somebody or someone from their uh, native homeland or f a loved one is being hurt they do have a spark to protect them and this main character she didn't have that and I feel like yeah it was a book it was a very fast read I read it like in two days <laughs> so it's very fast but it's not the fantasy that I'm always looking for I always like to have a very good character development alongside I, I, I get the world building but I don't mind if I don't have a world building if I do have a good character development and I didn't have in this one and it sucked because the good with the book had a very good uh, storyline so yeah it was a two out of five so yeah and another book that I read uh, it's from Kissy Bateman it's called The Devil to Pay and it's actually, I gave it a 4 out of 5 because it's actually a historical romance and it's, an Ita it's based in Italy so you have an Italian historical world going on there and it's, uh, it's based on the 15th, 16th century so renaissance kind of thing and it's a female character with a male character the male is a grumpy she is not a sunshine, so it's not a grumpy, verse, grumpy sunshine true, but she is uh, like a poppy, <laughs> like poppy, like Hayley, like, you know, like Farah. She's very sassy and down to her, and I really enjoyed a character like that because I feel like in historical romances you do have some characters that usually um, try to break the mold they are into but they don't do it and in, and in this case the character actually did it because she was alone in the castle she dressed up like a boy it was very interesting to see uh, how she uh, tried to you know reject and accept the norms that they, are, they that were thrown to her because she um, her father died her uncle killed her father in order to have you know her father lands and she had to flee because um, he would have killed her and she ended up in um, the male character <laughs> house at El Diablo or El Diablo I think that's how you say in Italian so the devil roughly translated the devil and the devil Sandro uh, is actually someone that is a mercenary, so he does goes to he, he went to the war with Spain and all of that. So he he fought in those medieval slash Renaissance wars, and he was a mercenary, so he did it for money. So when she arrived and said, "I want to avenge my father and I want to kill my uncle," he said, "Okay, cool, but." I need you to do this and this and this and it's actually pretty funny because she was like okay I'll do it but inside her mind she was like I won't do it I'm gonna get rid of everything that we agreed and you don't you won't even understand how I do it so she always tried to um, define new rules for herself which is pretty cool and the romance was good it was not forced it was an enemies to lovers it was a historical romance and sometimes I do feel like I need to step outside of the fantasy world <laughs> that I always enjoy reading and read a little bit of historical romance or contemporary romance or sometimes even non-fiction in order to really enjoy the fantasy <laughs> so this was the other book that I read and this book was I mean I do have a review you can check it out it's on this channel but this book was a five star read I really don't know what else to say about this book except it's excellent it's one of those books that you truly need to read. The story is amazing. The writing style is perfect. Madeline Miller really nailed it. And I really, 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 really recommend this book for everyone. Really, truly, everyone. It's already translated in Portuguese. It's called O Canto de Quilos. It's translated in several languages. So if you don't know or if you can't really uh, read English or you are afraid to read English which I always advise you try to do read it even if it's a small book and a simpler with simpler um, phrases or 
words. You can always read in English and try it because this English is like the language where literature happens. I don't know why, but I mean, I do. English is well diffused around the world, but it doesn't matter right now. So the book is very good and I highly recommend you to read it. Okay, so next one was my first uh, one star of the year. And I think it would be the only one, I hope, because I hate giving one stars reviews. I really, really, really try to give like two, three stars reviews because I feel like if I'm giving a one star, I'm saying that this suck and I really don't want to do that because I know this, the books take time and people really need to be inspired and I really, really, really respect the process. But I mean, this book, My Killer Vacation, it came out this year, it's from Tessa Bailey and I really didn't finish it. I read 60% and I said, look, this is not for me. I'm not, I'm not even finishing the book because it became too much. So you do have, it's a crime book with romance, which I was very into. And it's, I, I haven't read anything from Tessa Bailey. I do know that it happened one summer and the, one, the other one, hook, line and something, <laughs> and something. Uh, are very good and I was like D dope I'm gonna read this one because it came out this year and it sounds awesome because it's a crime with romance like, okay and the first chapter was amazing I was like Duh, this is good this is very good so we already have a dead body we already have something here and then you went downhill from there it was so bad that sometimes I had to put it down and, took, and take several deep breaths. Firstly, the characters like that. They were just characters. You know, like you couldn't connect with anything they were saying, with any feelings they were, they were feeling, with anything. It was mind-blowing. Second, the male character, Miles, was awful. Like, just so, just so, so we can so I can be as clear as possible, they met and half an hour later he was already licking her tummy and guys I get that spicy stuff are really 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 good but it has to have context I mean I don't think it's normal when a female character goes to another room to fetch something a male character goes with her and just because they are talking he just fall down to his knees and licked her tummy because she was in the bikini. It's a vacation, obviously, my killer vacation, you can guess that, right? I don't think that's normal. And the next day, so 12 to 24 hours after they met, they were already trying to have, uh, to make love, let's say it like that. And the love scenes, when it happened, so like a week after they met, like super fast, because summer apparently in these books are it's like four weeks. I don't know what happened here, but yeah, the love scenes were awful. Were awful. She tried to make it spicy and to have it all like a dirty little thing, and it sucked. It was too much. I really felt very uncomfortable reading it. I actually read some scenes out loud to my fiance and his friends, and they were like just no enough 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 i don't want to hear it i don't understand why people are reading that because that's just too much and i get it it is too much i mean i actually snapped some parts of the book and placed it in my instagram stories and some people actually replied to me saying what is going on in this book and i'm like i, I don't even know <laughs> and i'm reading it because they were so confused he was literally men's planning or oh, i don't know how to say the word but you know what i mean like he was literally misogynist and like it was too much like his his way of talking his discourse her personality everything was and i ended up not to finish it i read 60 percent and that's it i'm not gonna finish the book i don't want to know anything in fact like in chapter four i just want to know why that man was murdered and who killed him that was it i hated the romance i tried to skip it as much as possible and i realized that if i'm skipping a contemporary romance novel then probably the novel is not for me so 
I think that if you want to read it, read it, but be aware of the weirdness that's there. And I read a lot of weird stuff, let me just say that. <laughs> so, lastly but not least, Twisted Love. Everyone is talking about this book, it's on Book Talk. Everyone knows that this book is like the book of the year, of, of the summer, I don't know how to classify it. but. I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. It was very good. I mean, it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Ava and Alex. The part of the deception and deceiving going on there was interesting and intriguing. But <laughs> the chapters after, you know, she left him and he just goes after her and decides that he wants her and you won't give up until she accepts him. That, for me, was a huge red flag. Like, guys, I get why authors are saying this, right? I do get it. No, don't get me wrong. I think that we should be very careful what we put out there. Because, and I don't want to give you a lecture or anything like that, but I think that if you are an author, you should understand that you do have a responsibility because usually <laughs> girls, I'm not gonna say all of the girls, but usually females, and I'm not gonna say all of the females, but you know what I mean, usually people romanticize this, I mean, stalker, uh, stalking, and you know, overprotectiveness, and all of that, it's not romantic, it's actually a pain in the ass, but I'm sorry, it's actually something that we shouldn't romanticize, because it's a behavior that we should actually see as a red flag. And we don't, because sometimes of the series, of the books, of the TV shows and movies and everything that normalize that kind of behavior. And it's not normal behavior, like boys will be boys kind of thing. I mean, I'm not saying that the writers shouldn't do this. I'm saying that they sh if they do it, like she did, they then we as people that read the book and are trying to like do YouTube or bookstagrams or whatever, we also have the responsibility to say, look, the book was good, but you do have to bear in mind that this character, this grumpy versus sunshine kind of troupe, it's not a troupe that we want in real life, because in real life, women don't actually have to save men, nor men have to save women. We actually have to love ourselves for what we are, even if we think we suck, we need to learn how to love yourselves and then you are, you will be able to love someone else. And this is a very huge discourse, it's just to say that the book was very good and I gave it a four stars, but I think it's important to have in mind that normalizing this type of behavior like stalking and overprotectiveness and don't touch her and all of that, it's not something that we want because um, we don't want that the next generation grows accepting this kind of behavior. That's all I'm saying. It's just a side side note. I mean, obviously the book, the author didn't have that in mind when she wrote this. <laughs> I'm just saying that we should have that in mind when we're reading it. And that doesn't mean that we can enjoy the book. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So yeah, this was my July wrap up. <laughs> I read a lot. I hope August can be this good. I have amazing readings planned, amazing books planned to read in this month. I hope I can do it. Fingers crossed. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up to this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Ooh.